Hello everyone and welcome to our short video about the dependent sensing capabilities within SAP's Integrated Business Planning or IBP solution. In this video, we will be focusing on the key question, what does demand sensing really do? Demand sensing bridges tactical and operational processes. The first thing it does is it leverages internal demand signals to sense short-term demand. These include your consensus demand forecast and other internal signals like sales, shipments, promotions, and future open orders. Secondly, demand sensing is also able to leverage various external demand signals, such as retailer point of sales, customer store inventories, social sentiment, weather, market research, so on and so forth. By analyzing and learning from these various demand signals, demand sensing optimizes the granular short-term sensed forecast. The demand sensing process resides between consensus demand planning and operational supply and deployment planning, bridging tactical and operational processes. Traditional consensus demand planning and forecasting process relies on statistical models which run on historical sales to draw a picture of the mid to long term future demand. This mid to long term horizon usually focuses on the next 6, 12 to 24 months. Forecasting is usually done in a weekly or monthly buckets and is rerun with a similar cadence. The forecast is also usually at an aggregate level such as a product, customer group or geography level. The natural question becomes, how do you translate these forecasts to a level that drives execution? How do you arrive at a daily detailed forecast to drive operational processes? That's where demand sensing comes in. It leverages the power of machine learning and pattern recognition to optimize daily forecasts for each SKU, each location, and each customer, leveraging multiple demand signals across your supply chain. So what does demand sensing really do? Let's take a look at a few examples to answer this question. In this video, you will learn how demand sensing with IBP optimizes short-term forecast, gives visibility into factors driving sense demand, and brings confidence around expected improvements in forecast accuracy with demand sensing. Let's start with an example. In this example, we have a specific product where the consensus demand points to demand going down from historic highs. Sales and marketing think that we have oversold the market recently, and that our demand will be on the low side going forward. This is also reflected in our consensus demand plan. We see some key data for this product on my screen right now. On the right hand side we have these blue rectangles which signify future planning periods where we want to sense the demand, while the rest of the data to the left show historical numbers. The green line shows us actual past sales but within the blue rectangles, within the future planning horizon, the green line shows us current open orders. Remember, customers may order way more than this within the future planning horizon. We just don't know what the ultimate order number is going to be. These are just the open order levels that we know of today. The black line represents our consensus demand, both history and also latest available future forecast. The bar graph on the bottom shows historically what percent of actual final sales were known in terms of open orders before each week started in the previous year. We can see that usually we have had visibility into 60, 70 to 99 percent of final demand for a week right as the week was starting. But of course during those historical weeks before the week started we did not know what the eventual sales would be. So is our theory that the demand is going down right? Do we have a good reliable consensus forecast set for the near future? Let's ask SAP IBP. Let's look at the latest demand sensing results from the IBP system. When I log into my dashboard, I see on the left top corner the familiar graph that we just looked at, but now we also have the optimized near-term sense demand as shown in these blue bars. On the right top corner, we also have a zoomed view into the six-week planning horizon. It is clear that sense demand is higher than our current level of consensus demand forecast. Sense demand is between 1,000 to 2,000 units, whereas consensus demand changes around 800 to 1,300. We also see the current open orders as shown in the green line in the future. We see that we have a sizable set of open orders currently. On the right bottom graph, SAP IBP also shows us why it's recommending adjustments to the consensus demand and what's driving the sense demand. First, the gray bars show us demand sensing's adjustments due to the forecast bias it is detecting in uh, the prior revisions of the forecast. You will see that for most weeks it has increased the forecast by 2 to 30% to compensate for historical under forecasting. 
Secondly, the blue bars in the same graph show us adjustments that we need to make to account for current open order trends. Machine learning is detecting that the current level of open orders is quite high compared to historical trends and um, quite high to justify how low our consensus demand forecast currently is. So demand sensing is recommending up to 65% increase of the forecast in certain weeks to compensate for this. Lastly, on the left bottom corner, we see estimates from demand sensing on how much these adjustments will improve forecast error compared to if we just go ahead with the current consensus demand forecast. We see up to 18% points improvement in mean absolute percentage error is possible. Demand sensing is not only optimizing short-term forecast, but it is also providing detailed visibility for planners to understand the results. We went through a weekly example so far to keep things simple, but of course, demand sensing is all about granularity and daily level planning, so daily level views are also easily accessible for the planners. Now let's add one external data signal to the analysis for the same product. Let's assume we also have point of sales data from the stores of our customers nationwide for the same product. Let's say this data is represented by the purple line and all other data elements are exactly the same. So what should the short-term future forecasts look like with this extra information? Should we change anything? Let's ask SAP IBP. When we add customer store sales or point of sales POS data to our forecast model and refresh the results, we see that sense demand is higher than the previous example. Remember, without POS, sense demand was between 1,000 and 2,000 units. Now it's between 1,800 to 2,700 units. Demand sensing is able to recognize the correlation external demand signals have with the final demand and improve forecast quality. In this case, for a few weeks in our planning horizon, demand sensing detects that POS data is pointing to higher sales and is highly correlated with um, eventual sales that we might expect. So it suggests forecast increases. You will see on the right bottom corner graph that we have purple bars showing us the percent increase to the forecast across different weeks due to learnings from POS data. Now let's expand the example one more time. For the same product, what if we also have social sentiment data expressed in the form of positive to negative ratio of um, Twitter mentions for our product? And let's say this is represented um, with the orange line on the graph and everything else is the same. So it looks like we enjoyed periods of quite positive sentiment around our product, uh, while at times it became more neutral. Should this picture change our demand expectations? Let's ask SAP IBP. When we add social sentiment ratio data to our forecast model and refresh the results, we see that sense demand is higher than previous examples. Now it is between 1800 to almost 2800 across different weeks. So demand sensing was able to understand correlations among different demand signals and eventual expected sales, and was able to react to the additional information from social sentiment ratios to optimize short-term demand forecast. It was able to detect that all these factors in our supply chain point to additional demand expectations a few weeks out in our horizon. And now we also see the orange bars in the root cause analysis part of the screen showing us the adjustment needed to account for the signals learned from social sentiment ratio. In this video, you have learned how demand sensing with IBP optimizes short-term forecast, gives visibility into factors driving sense demand, and brings confidence around expected improvements in forecast accuracy that you can unleash with demand sensing. Through these demand sensing capabilities, companies typically see a sizable reduction in forecast error across different lags of the forecast, ranging from 2 to 10 percent points for longer lags to 10 to 25 percent points in shorter lags. Exact improvement, of course, will depend on the nature of the business, the industry, and how mature the demand planning process itself is. In summary, demand sensing is a powerful capability to optimize short-term forecasts based on pattern recognition using multiple demand signals. It brings technical processes closer to execution and provides daily granularity into upcoming demand in a highly automated fashion. This automation is very important. It frees up planner capacity by taking the daily guesswork out. The improved short-term forecast accuracy and increased automation result in better decisions and business results around deployment, allocation, transportation planning, inventory levels, 
and better on-shelf availability. Thank you for your time. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You're also always welcome to contact us with any questions.